we have to take a look at the at the organ systems that generate meiotic processes, as you know, and 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 I want to take a look at the female system. Now, remember what we're talking about here. We're talking about meiosis. We're talking about, you know, I, I again, remember what happens. The reality of meiosis is this: we start out with a somatic cell. That somatic cell is 2N. It goes through, after homologs line up, it goes through a split. This is reality, this isn't just on paper, and eventually becomes a gamete. Now, we know that the, the gametes are generated in organs called gonads. And the, the idea being that if, if, if you are going to take a somatic cell and place it in a situation where fertilization is going to occur, whether it's a pond or a fallopian tube and anything in between, the point is you have to get that cell ready. And so structure follows function, and it does the same thing in human beings or cats or dogs or fish or whatever. And, and talk about structure, here's one now. This is, this is the, a schematic of the, the human ovary, and I want to correspond what's going on in here to what's happening in meiosis. So we're going to go back and forth, back and forth, to see exactly what happens here. All right, let's take a look. First of all, that, that somatic cell, if you will, that cell that starts out as 2N, is going to be right there, right? And we're going to call that the primary oocyte. We, you never know how to pronounce this thing. Depend, there you go. It's got a little whatever that's called there. Um, those of you who speak German know what that's called. It'll come to me. And so, so we're going to call that a primary oocyte. And that oocyte is 2N. Now, it's got to go through meiosis. And so let's see what's going to happen here. Now, the the oocyte becomes an ogonium, and that's going to be in one of these middle stages right in here. So we're going to go from the oocyte. I said that backwards. We're going to go from an oocyte, which is a primary oocyte, to something called a secondary oocyte. The, the ogonium I mentioned is going to come in actually up here at an earlier stage before meiosis starts. So I said it, so I got to tell you about it so you don't think I just made it up. All righty, so let's see what's going to happen. We'll come back to our ovary in a second. Ogonium, generic cell, primary oocyte. Take a look. Now, once again, this isn't human because there's, how do I know it's not human? Four chromosomes. All right, but look what's happening. The primary oocyte right here is, has its four chromosomes, and what are we in? We are in meiosis one, aren't we? Okay, and the, the, the meiosis one is going to be where you get to that point where you're gonna go through prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase, telophase one, and you're eventually gonna end in what is called a secondary oocyte. Now, one, fascinating thing that happens in meiosis one. And I'm not going to tell you why this happens. You're going to tell me. Or I'm going to ask you, and then I'll probably tell you. Here's the thing. There's my ogonium to a primary oocyte, and then we're going to split. But now I'm going to show you one major difference between oogenesis and sperm atogenesis, sperm forming. Okay, here we have what are going to be called the secondary oocytes. In other words, what did we just do? We just went through meiosis one. Okay, we have our secondary oocytes. Our secondary oocytes are starting to mature, but look, one of them is teeny tiny, and one of them is large. This is called a polar body. And it's completely non-functional. It degenerates. 
So now I hope I've planted a seed. You're saying to yourself, why? Why does this thing, now remember, what does this has? This still has the chromosomes that are doubled, but it has half the number of chromosomes, okay? Um, and, but they're still doubled. And so in essence, that gets wasted. So I want you to ask yourself why. We'll come back to that later. So far, so good? 